Grossbeat is an insane audio manipulation plugin. It can warp the pitch, timing, volume and more of any audio source you give it to create really, really cool effects. And even if you only have the trial version, you should still try out Grossbeat and I'll show you why. So in this video, we're going to go over the layout of Grossbeat, how Grossbeat actually works and how it manipulates both time and volume. And I'm going to show you four unique ways you can use Grossbeat in your tracks today. And really quickly, if you want to check out this video in written format, we have a blog post covering everything you need to know about Grossbeat. And while you're at it, check out our free download section, which we just updated with new serum presets, vital presets, analog sample packs, lo-fi sample packs, and a ton more. So what is Grossbeat? Well, it's a native FL Studio plugin available in the Signatures and All Plugins bundle. You can basically break down Grossbeat into three different sections. Uh, over here, you have your uh, time controls and time slots. Here, you have your volume controls and volume slots. And over here is the envelope uh, editing window. So this is where you can add different points, uh, edit, etc., both for volume and for time. But the way it works is that you have 36 different slots for both time and volume. And in each slot, you can store a different uh, envelope. So let me switch here to volume. Slot one, you could have, uh, let me just change it. You could have, for example, this. And then in slot two, you could have uh, something like uh, this, for example, just making something up. And so now both of these envelopes that I just drew are stored in these two slots. So slot one was this curve, slot two is this curve. And you have uh, 36 slots for both uh, time and volume. As we'll see later, this makes it easy to switch between envelopes uh, with your MIDI keyboard, with automations within the playlist, uh, etc. But so these are all the slots that are available here. Uh, by default, when you open Grossbeat, you'll get uh, just empty slots everywhere. But you can also switch uh, in the presets mode to different uh, preloaded slots. So for example, if I load up patterns, you can see a bunch of uh, slots here are already filled in. Basic 1, basic 2, uh, chaos, etc. So let's switch back to default mode. All the slots are empty. And let's go over the volume automation first, because that's really the easiest one to understand. You've probably already understood how this works. Uh, you've got uh, your four beats represented horizontally. You're gonna love me. And the volume is controlled with the curve. So if your line is at the top, that's playing at 100% volume. And if you're all the way at the bottom, that's 0% volume. So if I draw something uh, like this, for example. So if I draw something like this, we're going to hear the volume dipping out and back in. You're going to love me. Yeah, you better love me. You're going to love me. Things get a lot trickier when we move to the time envelopes. So when we move to time envelopes, we're going to affect three different things. First, the speed at which a sample is playing. Secondly, the direction of playback. So if the sample is playing forwards or backwards. And thirdly, the position of where we're playing the sample. If we're playing the first beat or the third beat or the fourth beat of a sample. That's a lot to take in. So let's take it step by step. Practically, you can draw three types of lines. Either it's a flat line, like this one, so just flat. Uh, either it's a rising line, so this would be a rising line here. Or you can draw a falling line. So far, nothing too complicated. Either it's flat, rising or falling. So let's first examine if we draw a flat line. So let's say like this, flat line here, and then a flat line here. What happens to the audio? You're gonna love me, love me. You better love me, love me. So what we can actually hear is that the sample is still playing forward and it's playing at normal speed, but we're actually jumping back in the sample. So if I actually bring it down here, you're gonna hear it even more. So still flat lines, but listen to this. You're gonna love me, you're gonna love me. You better love me, you better love me. You're gonna love me, you're gonna love me. So we can hear that every two beats, the sample is actually jumping backwards and playing those two beats again. Now, why is that? So if you look at the window of Pro Speed here, horizontally, we have four beats displayed. So one beat, two beat, three beats, four beats. 
that's the structure of the grid. But we also have beats vertically. So this is the confusing part. When we're talking about volume, it's zero to 100% volume. That's pretty simple. But when we're talking about time envelopes, the vertical axis actually represents beats. And so what's happening when I'm starting a new line here, we're actually jumping back two beats. So after two beats of playing forward at normal speed, we're jumping back two beats and then playing two beats again at normal speed forward. And you can see this here uh, on the left, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, etc. This means that this line corresponds to one beat backwards, two beats backwards, etc. So that was for flat uh, lines. What happens now if we draw a falling line? So something a bit more like this. Well, let's just play it. You're gonna love me. You better love me. You're gonna love me. So here what's happening is that we're, we've actually slowed down the speed of the, the sample. And in the same process, we've actually pitched it down. So here we've slowed it down a bit. If we draw a more steeper curve. You're gonna love me. You gonna love me. You're gonna love So that's basically a falling line. You're slowing down the sample. And at the same time, you've pitched it down. Now, as I go down, we're getting slower and slower and slower until we cross this line here that you can vaguely see here in gray. This is what Gross Beef calls the safety line. And once we cross this safety line, we're actually going to start playing the sample backwards because we've slowed it down so much that now it's going to be playing backwards. Yes. Him. Him. Yes. As you can hear, that's playing backwards. Now you've probably noticed that there was an empty gap at the start. And that's because we've gone below the safety line. So Grossbeat calls it a safety line because if you go below this line, you won't have any audio in the first uh, beats when you play it. And that's because Grossbeat doesn't have anything in its buffer. So to be able to play something backwards, you actually need to give Grossbeat something to play first. You need to give it something in its memory and then it can play it backwards. But if you want to play something backwards immediately, well, Gross Beat doesn't know what to play because you haven't played anything yet. But then in the following beats, uh, Gross Beat has listened to the sample and now it can play something backwards. So we've covered a falling envelope. That's basically slowing down the sample until you actually play it backwards. And you've probably guessed if we do a rising envelope, that's going to be the opposite. And the same principle is true when I talked about the safety line. We're trying to play the sample faster, but Grossbeat doesn't have anything in its memory yet to be able to play it faster. So we're going to get a bit of silence here at the start uh, in the first four beats. So now you're probably wondering, Simon, that's great. Uh, you've covered rising envelopes, falling envelopes, but you've always used straight lines. What happens if we just use something a bit more like this or something a bit more like this? What happens to the sound? Well, let's just give it a try. Let me draw this type of curve here and let's listen. You're gonna love me. You better love me. You're gonna love me. So here, instead of playing the sample slower, but at a constant speed, we're slowing down the sample. Uh, similarly, you can uh, speed up a sample. So let's say uh, I have, let's say I have a curve like this and let's bring this one back up. So here we're going to be speeding up the sample in the last two beats. So when should you use gross beat? Well, one way I love to use gross beat is to create really cool transitions or as some people call them turnarounds. These are sections of one bar, or maybe half a bar at the end of one section. And we're trying to indicate to the listener that we're transitioning to another section. 
Uh, so you can do this often with filtering, removing the bass, removing drum elements, etc. But let's give a try with gross beats. So here I have this uh, chill lo-fi style of loop uh, playing. <laughs> And so just here on this, uh, this last bar here, I'd like to create some kind of transition before the saxophone comes in. So let's uh, do this with gross beat. Uh, I'm going to slap it on the master and we'll just see what we can come up with. So I'm going to use a slot 10 here. Uh, I'm just going to rename it to TX for transition. And obviously we don't want gross beat to be playing for our entire loop so we just want to activate gross beat during the transition one cool way you can do this is to simply right click on the slot you've chosen create automation clip and now the level shown here will activate that specific slot uh, in gross beat so if i do something like this we're gonna basically activate the slot on just this last bar All right, so I've settled on this type of curve here. So as we've covered previously, here after one beat, I'm going to repeat the same beat. And then we're going to be slowing down vinyl style uh, the, the audio. So let's give that a listen. <laughs> If you wanted, you could combine that with uh, volume automation as well. So you could create uh, some kind of of, uh, of side chain maybe, or a pulsating effect or something like this. Uh, activate the slot in the same way by creating an automation clip. Another really cool way to use gross beat is to create new uh, track ideas. So let's say you have a sample or something you like, a melodic ID, and you want to start a new track with it. Um, you can use gross beat to manipulate it in new ways, resample the audio and start a new track. So here I have this uh, audio sample, which I really like. Let's just put a uh, gross beat on it. So I've loaded up, uh, I think it's the juggling science uh, preset. Um, and I've kind of went through different presets here, and this is one I came up with uh, that I really liked. So let's give this a listen. So you can hear there's a really cool uh, pitching and kind of a, an almost brand new melody that's appearing because we're pitching down, pitching up in certain areas. Um, so what I would typically do here is just render this to audio, and then you can cut and rearrange uh, different slices to create a brand new uh, melodic, uh, melodic idea. <laughs> Yeah, I really like that. <laughs> All right, so a third way you can use gross beat is to chop up breaks. Uh, this is a topic we've covered many times on our YouTube channel and also on our blog, where we've done guides on how to make drum and bass and how to make jungle music. A key aspect of those two genres is chopping up classic drum breaks, such as the Ammon break or the Hot Pants break or the Think break. Um, basically chopping them up and rearranging the hits to create a brand new rhythmic section. What you can do here, uh, I've loaded gross beat up here, and I've uh, loaded the uh, patterns, I believe. Yeah, patterns preset. So right now, this is how our drum break sounds without any processing. <laughs> So you can hear that drum break's already been processed. Uh, but what I want to do is just create new variations, um, maybe for the breakdown of my track or 
just to create new interesting IDs. So here you can switch between uh, the basic uh, presets really work well, I think. So let's give a few of these a listen. That probably already gives you a great idea of how by repeating uh, previous beats at different uh, different frequencies, we're actually chopping up uh, the break. And so what you could do here, for example, um, is uh, create an automation clip uh, like so. Uh, set it to uh, hold mode and then just simply create a few different points a bit like this this will basically trigger different uh, time envelopes uh, each time and so you can then resample this to audio and you have a bunch of different versions of your drum break chopped up <laughs> So obviously some of those are a bit extreme, but you get the idea you can simply resample this and chop up again and create brand new crazy jungle jump breaks. All right, one final way um, you can use gross beat uh, creatively. I don't think I've seen anybody else cover this technique uh, before, but it's basically using gross beat as a delay unit because gross beat can repeat previous beats as we've explored previously, you can use it as a delay plugin. So I have this uh, melodic loop uh, playing right here. So pretty dry for now. Uh, what I've done is routed to uh, a mixer track and then I've created a send channel for the delay. So if you're new, uh, basically right click here, sidechain to this track and then load up Fruity Send, right click here and select the track you just sidechained it to. So here I've named it delay and then just load up gross beat. I've just added a bit of a EQ here and wider free plugin just to make the delay a bit wider. And so this is going to be our delay channel. And let me give you a listen. So without and then with the delay. And so it's not a standard delay in the sense that you always get the same uh, the same echo on every note because gross beat is only going to repeat certain parts of your uh, of your melodic loop. So in this case, where there's a sort of a stutter effect that sounds like a delay here, you could uh, maybe try this one. So some of them are a bit more subtle. I actually like that one. There's like an echo here on the first beat and then a start effect afterwards. And so that's how you can use gross beat also as a delay unit. So this covers everything you need to know about gross beat. I hope you enjoyed this guide. Uh, let us know what you want us to cover in the next video and we'll see you soon.